We are going to be doing something different on this episode, and that is I'm going to be giving you basically where I go to right now if I want to learn something, if I want to grow, if I want to level up. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Sales Wolves podcast. I am your host, Tyler Harris, and I am a sales wolf. Ow. Ah, yes, it is episode 80, 8-0. We are going to be doing something different on this episode, and that is I'm going to be giving you basically where I go to right now if I want to learn something, if I want to grow, if I want to level up, if I want to get just motivated, or if I just want to be entertained uh, by some quality content, I made a list of all the people that right now um, are high up in in my rankings of people that I go to first. Like if I were to go to Instagram, like who, who am I flipping to? Whose stories am I checking out? Whose posts am I actually looking at? What vlogs am I watching? What podcasts am I listening to? Uh, things like that. I get tremendous value from these people that I'm about to uh, list out here for you. Uh, and I think you'll get uh, value out of this episode by being able to add a few of these people to your, uh, to your mix. Let me say just right off the bat here that there are tons of people that I'm leaving off this list. Tons of people. And I know just by even saying that this list exists, that I'm instantly going to offend someone whose content I watch on a regular basis. And for that, I'm sorry. I had to keep the list condensed and this is all I put and that is what it is. I'm sure your content's incredible or maybe not. But regardless, this is not a completely exhaustive list. It's just another list that I put together this morning of the people that are just front of mind for me right now. And so I'm gonna put those not really in ranking order, but they are somewhat in order from the people that I'm getting a ton of value from. So the first we're gonna start with is uh, Gary Vaynerchuk. And what I wanna do is as I introduce these people to you, some obviously that, of which you're already gonna know, but more importantly than the person is what actual content from that person am I really getting value from? And so starting with Gary V, um, someone that's had a humongous um, impact on my life. Uh, there was a period of about a year or so before I ever started putting any of my life out here on social media uh, where I consumed every single thing Gary put out, every single keynote, every single Ask Gary V, every single Daily V episode, every single pod session, every all that he was doing, and to a degree still do. Uh, what I have found in my own life is the more um, I, the harder I'm working, the more content I'm creating, the less I'm actually consuming. And it's interesting. I can kind of think back to periods of time where I was just really, absolutely, just hustling um, as hard as I possibly can. And those were time periods where I would miss like. 15 straight episodes of Daily V, whereas there's been times where I'm, you know, right there as soon as it pops on, I'm checking it out. Uh, but Daily V, I think, is first and foremost where I'm getting the most value from Gary. Um, Daily V is something that I watch in like downtime. What I mean by downtime, I mean um, le legitimately in the bathroom. I mean when I'm getting ready in the morning, when I'm in the shower, I've just got it playing. Um, when I'm, you know, in a waiting room for an appointment, if I'm just like in between calls, whatever that may be, it's what that's where I'm going to fill my my downtime. His pod sessions, which is something that he hasn't done a ton of, there there may have been six to eight of those now, uh, but I really like that format. Um, it's entertaining, uh, but it's also super valuable. But he brings in uh, typically three or four, I think usually three um, guests from sometimes very differing backgrounds. Sometimes they all have a general theme as to why he brought those particular people in on that day. One of my good friends, uh, Reezy Resells, was on there recently, did an incredible job uh, when they were talking about flipping and, uh, and starting from nothing and, and making some income. Um, but I really like the format of pod sessions. So if you haven't checked that out, definitely check that out. With the keynotes, with Gary's keynotes, um, a lot of it is gonna be the same. So every now and then I will look for one of his keynotes and I'm really just looking and I'm fast forwarding some 
to find out some new things that he's adding in. Because if you've heard a story, you've heard a story. There's a lot of that that gets repeated, and that's just the nature of speakers and what they do. That's no fault to him. That's just being in a room of people that don't know who he is, some that know him a little bit, and some that know his entire story. Inevitably, you're going to have some overlap and some reoccurring themes there. Um, but mainly, overall, what I'm getting from Gary and what I think you can get from Gary is just his strategy and what he's bringing, his strategy in where he's focusing his attention on social media. There are times where he has gone extremely hard on Instagram. There have been times where he's pushed extremely hard on Snapchat, extremely hard on Facebook, extremely hard on Instagram stories, extremely hard on IGTV, extremely hard on LinkedIn. There's been times. And so those are things that you have to just pay attention to if you are trying uh, to build a personal brand and become an influencer in that space. He often even says on his videos, um, don't so much listen to what I say, but just watch what I'm doing on social and just follow suit. And really his blueprint was from the very beginning, early stages of when I started building my personal brand on social media, it was the blueprint that I was following. Um, so I have a tremendous amount of appreciation for all the stuff he's put out. And he's really, he's like the godfather of social media. Like he's pioneering everything that's happening right now on a daily basis. And the team that he has built around him is absolutely incredible. So first and foremost, Gary V. Second, I got on here, Andy Frisella. Andy Frisella, the MFCEO project, where that kind of fits in my world is drive time. I love to listen to the MFCEO project when I'm on the road, when I'm in the car, when I'm on a plane, anything like that. Um, it's raw, it's very real, authentic, transparent, all that good stuff, but not in like a, like a, like a fluffy kind of way. It's like a transparent and like a, I'm going to shove it down your throat kind of way and tell you what's really going on. And that's what I love about Andy is that Andy's giving the real story. He talks about how for the first six or seven years, he didn't make over a thousand bucks. It was like six or 700 bucks in a month. For the first like six or seven years, he talks about living in the pea-stained mattress in the back of the supplement uh, store when all his friends were going out and having a good time. He talks about the struggles over building a business over 17 years. Like that's the guy that I want to learn from. I want to learn from the guy that's that's been in it for 17 years, that has gone through uh, tons of different obstacles, has had to overcome different things, and has ultimately rised to the occasion and has been successful, and you can learn a tremendous amount from that. I like that. That's current and past credibility because he's still building a business. He's still building a business that's doing, I think they did like close to 200 million in revenue last year or something like that. So um, the third is one that I've been really, really watching a lot lately, which is Tom Bilyeu. I'm assuming that's how you say it, Bilyeu. Colby K, good friend of mine, he says Bilyeu. And every time I say it, he says that I laugh because he actually knows the guy. But I think it's Bilyeu. Uh, but it's B-I- L-Y-E-U, but he's got um, a, a couple of different shows, but Impact Theory is the one that I watch um, or listen to um, a lot. It's incredible. The guests that he's have has had on there are absolutely next level, top entrepreneurs, influencers in the world that he's had on there. And the way that he has his whole production set up, like it looks like a, you know the set of, you know, Oprah or like some TV talk show, um, very professional. Um, his introductions, it's, he has the best introductions in the game. Like his introductions are like, are like the best monologue you've ever heard. It just so happens that he's introducing the person that's about to walk on stage and, and he's gonna have a conversation with that's kind of become his thing and what people know him for. Uh, but he also has um, relationship theory. I think one's called like health theory or something to do with health. Um, but one thing that I find extremely valuable that, um, that Tom has is some mashup, I don't know what you, exactly you call these, but they're like 45 minute videos where they mash up like tons of different keynotes and conversations that he's done all into one to where it feels like it's one 45 minute speech, but it's just a, a combination of probably 50 different videos. They're extremely motivating. I listen to those when I run a lot. Um, if you have the YouTube like Red or whatever subscription where it lets you click out of YouTube but still listen to the audio, um, that's what I'm listening to when I'm run when I run. And there's been tons of times where like I'm I'm out there and I'm exhausted and tired and out of breath, but I'm getting like chills because of some of the stuff that he's saying. Uh, it's really powerful stuff. And oh yeah, by the way, he created Quest 
Nutrition, which is a billion dollar company and he created it from nothing. Uh, so the story is incredible uh, to say the least. So um, definitely check out that. Um, his interview with uh, Jay Shetty is incredible. If you're looking at like a specific one to go to, um, check that out. Number four on here, I've got Gerard Adams. Uh, Gerard Adams has a YouTube series called Leaders Create Leaders. And it's next level in a number of different ways. The content, just in the actual conversation and the value that you'll get from that, huge. But the aesthetic quality of these videos is crazy. Digital Jeff, um, who's directing these films, they're beautiful. Like they're extremely well done. Like the number of cuts that are that are in these edits, like I can't even fathom. Um, but. They have four seasons now. They're in the fourth season. This season in particular, I think, is going to be awesome because it's called uh, Conscious Creators. So it's going to be a lot more about um, the mind and, and spirituality and different things like that. The first guest on this fourth season, the first episode was Jay Shetty. And I listened to it the other day. I did an Instagram story the second I got done listening to it, um, telling people to swipe up to go watch it. And... I was blown away. Like if I can get the chills, if I can get um, a ton of value from listening to a video, I can't even fathom when I get to watch the video. Um, but they talk about some unbelievable uh, topics and it gets extremely, extremely tactical. Um, but all the other episodes, this episode with Chris Stoikos, the episode with Gary V, the episode, um, he just filmed an episode with Mel Robbins that's gonna be coming out this season, which is awesome. Uh, but other than that, Gerard's content is great. Um, his Instagram stories are awesome. Uh, they're putting out some very, very high level as far as the aesthetic quality, but also bringing uh, value uh, with his content. So big, big shout out to Gerard. And he's just an awesome human being. I've had a lot of personal interaction with him. He's just a good, a good dude. Um, number five is going to throw a little curveball out there, but I'm going to say Elevation Church for number five, specifically Pastor Stephen Furtick. Um, here's the reason I say that. Why in the world would he say a church? Well, because this church, I think better than any other church, um, has really mastered social media and is doing a good job on social media. But that being said, just in their website and their content, their backlog of sermons, their sermons, Pastor, Pastor Stephen's sermons, they're always um, practical, as in like, it's not going to like your grandma's church, your grandma's Southern Baptist church, when you were 12 and you were forced to sit in and you just sat there and it was just like all this biblical stuff and and it was just over your head and it wasn't like what does this mean for me today like when you go when you listen to these sermons when you watch these sermons it's extremely applicable to like your business it's extremely applicable to your relationships with your with your spouse with your friends it's applicable to all areas of your life and that for me was huge Another thing that I like about it is when you go to the website and you look at the backlog of, of all these past sermons that he's done, the titles of the sermons and the descriptions give you the ability to really go and handpick something that you need at that particular time. I'm feeling lonely. Awesome. Let me go through this library and find a particular sermon that has to deal with loneliness. I'm feeling anxiety. Well, right now they're doing an entire series on anxiety, which is going to be awesome. Just started this past Sunday. Um, so there's, there's going to be specific sermons to meet specific needs or spe specific interests that you have at that time. Um, so they're doing an incredible job, uh, there. Um, the sixth one, probably also a little bit of a curveball cause I don't think anybody would expect this, uh, from me, especially TJ. Uh, but Dr. Jordan Peterson, I've been getting really into a lot of his stuff. TJ is madly in love with Dr. Jordan Peterson. And I mean that in the best way possible. Um, so this guy, so a couple notes here. Number one, I'll say I had to be in a certain mood to, to watch or, or listen to, uh, what do they call him, DJP? Is that what they call him? Is that the acronym? I got to be in a certain mood because he's brilliant, but a lot of the stuff, I'm going to be honest with you, goes over my head. He speaks very fast, and he speaks very fast in a way that if you don't consume a lot of his content or haven't consumed a lot of his content previously, you can get lost. People ask me, for example, how it is that I can remember all the things that I talk about extemporaneously when I'm lecturing. And the reason for that is because I've thought them through. Um, that being said, 
he has a ton of valuable information that he puts out. I don't agree with all of it. I'll, I'll be the first to say, like, I don't, I don't agree with a substantial amount of it. But I appreciate and I respect the way it's delivered, number one. And like right now, like that's a big thing that I, that I try to do is like when I listen to a speaker or I watch a speaker, I'm just as much focused on their delivery and their communication skills, like respecting that as much as I am analyzing the information that's being communicated and delivered, if that makes sense. And he's an incredible communicator. Um, and some of the topics that he goes into are topics that people are afraid to discuss, like different things, gender roles and, and race issues and um, equality versus inequality, all, all, these, different, all these different things. Um, because of that, there's a lot of bad publicity about the guy. Because anytime that you have someone that talks about polarizing topics, the far left, the far right, they're gonna take that and run with the pieces that they wanna run with, but you have to get the whole story by actually going to the source, and that's actually viewing it from the actual person, not viewing what Fox News said, not, not reviewing what this person's blog said that leans this way, um, but actually checking it out for yourself, and I would highly recommend it. Like I'm, I'm getting a lot out of it. I feel like I'm learning uh, from it. Uh, so definitely check him out. Um, his book, by the way, too, has been like, um, it's been on the uh, bestseller list for like, 18 straight weeks or something crazy like it's it's breaking records uh, those are the main ones i want to discuss there's a couple other um kind of noteworthy people that i just want to mention because they're absolutely crushing it and i am getting some something from it when i have time uh to to um to link up with them so brian mazza uh, we talked about him on the last podcast with Jason uh, Ciano. Uh, Brian Maz is killing it. He's up in New York. Um, I looked at this guy, fitness um, and, and fashion, uh, fitness and fashion. Um, he is my spirit, my shoe spirit animal is is him. And, and I have great envy of his shoe collection and his shoe plugs. Like his connections are insane. Like he's opening up boxes and his stories every day that just make me want to cry because I don't have these shoes one day. Um, and he just built a, a closet that's just beautiful and displays them all. Uh, but he's just a really, really good dude. Um, his story is incredible. I think he went to New York with like 400 bucks or something like that. And now his restaurant group is worth like 45 million, I think. Um, but he's been on the cover of Men's Health. He's every day doing different insane workouts with awesome people. He's got a new podcast with Rob Pinnell, big guy in the lacrosse space and fitness space. Uh, so just a good dude. Andy Dane Carter, um, he's out of uh, the LA area, I think um, specifically um, Long Beach, I believe. Uh, he's in the real estate space. Uh, he's got a book called um, 600 Doors, 300 Doors, a lot of doors. And uh, it's about real estate um, that TJ is, is given like ridiculous reviews of. He said it was awesome. I haven't read it yet. Uh, but I just like Andy Dane Carter as an individual. His Instagram stories are awesome because they're really, really tactical in some, in some valuable uh, business knowledge. But then he's got Instagram stories with his family. Like the very next click, it's his family and they're hanging out. And then the very next click, they're at his uh, bar and restaurant that he owns there. Uh, but he's building an incredible business. He's also created a media company like we have and they're um, servicing uh, some awesome clients doing that. So big shout out to him. Adam Mockett um, and his wife, uh, Johanna. Uh, market. I just love these people. Like their content is awesome. It's always high energy, which is contagious. And sometimes you just need that little boost. They're out uh, in California as well. Uh, I believe they're with uh, World Finance Group, but they've built an incredible business. Um, doing that. Um, Johanna just spoke on stage at their big event. Um, Ed Miletz, the, the president of that company, uh, spoke on stage and she absolutely crushed it. So kudos to those guys. Um, D. Murphy, someone that I had on the podcast, um, he's a founder of a number of different apparel uh, brands, New Republic uh, Shoes, Menlo Club, 5-4 Apparel. Uh, he's also the co-founder with uh, Christopher Paff, Drama Path. 
uh, with Young and Reckless. Um, this guy is awesome. He started a vlog called Life of D and has really taken off with it. Um, done a really, really good job putting that out there. I think they came out with a shirt yesterday, which is funny for, for the vlog. Uh, but he's taking this content to the next level and is really treating it like a business, but they're having a lot of fun with it. Him and Drama are kind of like competing. Um, but there's a lot of good content uh, coming out of that. Um, he's also got a podcast with um, Chris Paff called Group Chat, which is highly entertaining as well. He's got a Facebook group that I'm a part of. So check him out. Um, speaking of Chris Paff, I got him next on the list. Short story long, his podcast is a legit, legit, like top 10, maybe top five podcasts uh, on, on my list. Um, the guest that he's had on, he just had Gary Vee on. It was a really good episode. Uh, but he's had incredible guests like Aubrey Marcus and Duff, other people that we've mentioned on this list that he's had on his podcast, including Tom Bilyeu. Um, so he's doing an incredible job with that. And his content is growing every single day. It's getting better and better and better. Him and Dee are really kind of like competing on this whole like vlog. Uh, they did. They literally had a vlog contest, like who could vlog the most in a week. And I think uh, Chris won and was rubbing there was some kind of wager. I don't know. You have to check that out. Uh, but definitely check out Chris Paff. Um, I would be remiss to not mention Sean Whalen. Um, Sean Whalen has made a huge impact on my life uh, with his Lions Not Sheep organization. I am a part of the Lions Den, which is a part of that Lions Not Sheep group. Uh, it's a private Facebook group that I get a ton of value out of. There's a weekly Facebook Live that he does on Wednesdays at 12 um, uh, Pacific, uh, that I get a ton of value from going through that core four. You guys have heard a lot of stuff from me about core four. That's where I got that from. He is the one that taught that to me. I hired him as a coach. It's been a huge impact on my life. Um, his social media is crazy. It's like 800 plus million views now on his videos, a lot of polarizing topics that he goes through, but it's wildly entertaining and he's extremely successful. So definitely a good guy to check out there. Um, another one out there in Utah where Sean is, is Bryce Prescott. Um, a shout out to Bryce Prescott, especially his content of the last couple of weeks has been really, really good. He's, he's implemented some big changes in his life. And I told him the other day, I sent him a text message. I was like, man, I'm seeing like your game just elevate in the content that you're putting out there. And I can't help but think it's gotta be related to some of these changes he's made in his life. Um, and he's really, really, really putting out good content. So he's got an awesome podcast, but um, his Instagram stories are hilarious. He does this one thing that to me is just like the funniest thing. He calls it, um, it's called like apple snack something. Have you seen this where he eats an apple on Instagram stories? He just like sets his phone up on a tripod and he's just like, Argh. And he just like talks about a topic and he's like eats and he eats and then the entire like to the core and he's like, all right guys, that's your apple snack or apple something minute. It's very, very entertaining, but I'm actually getting some good stuff out of it. So definitely a huge shout out uh, to Bryce. Have to say huge shout out to Jason Sienna. We just had him on the last Sales Wolves podcast, uh, but him, his content's great. What he's doing with, with Sabre Real estate is incredible with their vlog. It's definitely some next level stuff that you're gonna be seeing a lot more from companies because people like him are now doing that for other companies and have organically created uh, that media channel to be able to go and service and give other people the opportunity to get their messages out and build their brands and, um, and, and build a social media presence. So he's now doing vlogs for other companies. Uh, but their content is awesome. I mentioned on the last Sales Wolves podcast that his newsletter is actually really good. There's a lot of good content that comes out in that newsletter. It's one of the ones that I don't just automatically delete. I actually like look at it, uh, which says a lot. Um, Nehemiah Davis is someone that I wanted to mention because this guy is to me just like the definition of servant leader. Like I've joked around with multiple people and had us both in a conversation almost say at the same time that he's the future mayor of Philadelphia. And I truly believe that this guy is the future mayor of Philadelphia, but everything you see in his stories and in his posts, it's all about like giving back to the community, giving back to the inner city, doing stuff for kids, doing stuff for less fortunate, opening up his facility for different events and always out there just helping people. When I met this guy, the first time I met him was at that event at Andy Frisella's um, facility with Gary Vee at the launch of the Ask Gary Vee book. He was there literally helping like uh, open doors for people as they were walking in, helping park cars. When I met him the second time, 
he was, it was at the event with Gerard Adams and E.T. up in New York, and he was there helping um, backstage with E.T.'s team. And so this guy's always using that value first and serving uh, to ultimately land himself into some awesome opportunities and, and an awesome position that he's in with his business. And so he's doing really, really cool things. Definitely check him out. He's on some crazy vacation right now at a, on a location that I can't even pronounce. It's like QSO, I don't even know. Uh, but there's been some really cool footage that have come out lately in his Instagram story. So definitely check out him. It's Neo Davis O or something like that. Uh, but we'll link all this stuff up, some, some screenshots. The last person I want to mention um, is a guy named Casey Adams. And this guy I follow just because I've got mad respect. Like he's just turned 18. He just graduated from high school. But this guy's networking like a freaking professional. Like the people that he's had on his podcast just absolutely blows me away. Um, he's doing an event with Grant Cardone at the end of like next month or something like that. But I like looking at his Instagram stories to see what in the world he's doing. Like I love the fact that like he found his lane, he had some early success, but he doubled, tripled, quadrupled down on it. Like I have utmost respect for that. Like he's a young kid, um, but he's got his act together and, he, and he's doing it. And he's having a lot of fun. It seems like he's really genuinely enjoying I am envious of the fact that like when I was 17, 18 years old, like not even close uh, to doing anything remotely productive uh, like he's doing, uh, but I have a tremendous amount of respect for that. So definitely want to give him a huge shout out. He's come up in conversation like randomly with people where I'm like, you know that guy? And they're like, yeah, how do you know him? Like, how do you know him? Like, what? Like, how, how is this even possible? Which is just kudos to him for putting that presence out there and, and getting his face out there. So he's done an incredible job. So like I said, this list is certainly not exhaustive. There's 50 more people that I respect, that I um, consume their content on a daily, if not, you know, at least weekly, day, uh, weekly basis. Uh, but those are just a few that I think you guys can check out. If two or three of them um, tickle your fancy, as they say, then uh, start following them and, and engaging with their content and start getting something from them. Out of this list, there's not a single, it's not possible that you can take this list, go check out, go follow some of these people and not be impacted in a positive way. That was the goal uh, for us doing this episode. I know it's a little different, uh, but thought that you guys would get something out of what I, where I go to, uh, to get filled back up, where I go to, um, to level up, to grow, to become a better version of myself. Uh, and that's through a lot of these people and more. So with that, this is episode 79, 80. Is it 80? Unbelievable. Episode 80, the Sales Wolves podcast flying solo today. I am Tyler Harris, your host, and uh, I am a sales wolf. Ow. All right, thanks. <laughs>